Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. We're so happy to have you celebrating with us on this fourth Sunday in Lent as we're in the presence of the Lord. We invite you to come on and be a part of this worship as we invite the presence of the Lord. The word of the Lord comes to us out of John's gospel, the third chapter and the 14th verse. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for blessing us to be in your house again on this day. We ask that we might lift you up and exalt your name like never before. So God, we ask that you would send forth your word and your power. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, voices anointed. Celebrate with us the wonderful way in which the Lord has blessed you. Sing to his glory.
thank you so very much, Voices Anointed. I am healed. I don't know about you, but every time I hear this song, it reminds me it doesn't matter what has happened. It doesn't matter what I've been through. I am healed, and I'm on the other side of my blessing. Thank God for you. Thank you, Brother Mark Archibald, for your wonderful leadership, and we thank God for all of our singers as well as our most anointed musicians. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Look with me today into God's Word as we hear what God has to say to us out of the gospel according to St. John, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21 from the New Living Translation. And as Moses lift up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him already has been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world. The people love darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so that others can see that they are doing what God wants. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. For the next few moments, I'd like to share with you a sermon that I have entitled, Lift Him Up. Lift Him Up. Let us pray. Father, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer, we ask that your word will leap from the printed pages and become alive and real in all of our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Lift him up. Our text on today comes to us through and by the gospel that we hold to be written by John. John was that beloved disciple of Jesus. He was the one who began to articulate to us through uh, the words of Jesus uh, that have been printed on these pages. John's gospel in the third chapter is a very familiar passage that so many of us have read. This gospel is one in which many of us um, hold very near and dear to our heart because it gives us that very beloved passage of the 16th uh, verse. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. What a powerful passage. We use that. And that is quoted so many times at the conclusion of a service to invite one to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. But today I want to talk about lift him up, lift him up. Our text lets us see in the, in the 14th verse, as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now this becomes the introductory words that take us into the rest of the text. We find out here that this begins to give us a flashback to remind us in the days of Moses. You remember when Moses were, was leading uh, the children of Israel um, from uh, Egypt and to the promised land. They found themselves in many different snags, many different difficult moments, moments in which they didn't have water, moments in which they didn't have food. But God miraculously provided for them everything that they needed. They also ran into a situation you will find in the Old Testament, and it talks about it, how there were serpents, there were snakes that start biting the people. And the people were becoming sick from these bites, and preadventure some had even died. And so we find out something that is so powerful. It tells us in that Old Testament passage that Moses took the image of a snake, got Aaron to uh, make it for him, put it on a pole, and he lifted it up. And as he lifted up the serpent on the pole, when the people saw it, they would be healed from the bite, the venomous bite of that snake. Now, many times you and I, when we've read throughout the Bible, it lets us see in the book of Genesis that the the evil one, the devil, is is um, use the image of a snake. We can find in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve were together. And when Eve finds herself uh, being tempted by uh, the serpent, um, the serpent, the snake is the one that puts Eve in an awkward situation. 
And so we find out this image of the serpent is now putting them in a bad situation. Moses is with the children of Israel. He is now leading them to the land of promise. And in the midst, they come up this situation. The situation arises that the people are being bitten by venomous snakes. And God tells Moses, tell the people, if they look up at this pole with the snake on it, they will live. It is interesting and it's very amazing that even in our modern day uh, field of medicine, you will find that there is an image that you will see inscribed on some of them that you will see the image has a snake wrapped around a pole. And in many cases, we see that that it is somewhat of a symbol of a cross with a snake around it. And it is the symbol that we use that help is on the way. It's an image to let you know that those persons in the medical health care field uh, know what they're doing, that they are able to bring about a remedy to the situation. Now, it tells us just as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. Oh, this text begins to introduce us and to remind us as we're in this season of ad, as we're in this season, as we approach Lent. Lent is the season that prepares us for Palm Sunday, that prepares us for Easter. Every Sunday that we celebrate is a little Easter leading us up to that climactic moment of Resurrection Sunday. That's the Sunday in which we celebrate that he arose from the grave with all power in his hand. The text lets us see that people were dying, but whenever they saw the image of the snake lift up on the pole, it is then that they realized that they would get their healing. It says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the snake on a pole, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now, when you and I think about this, we can't help but uh, because we know the story or we have heard the story. We know that Jesus goes to Calvary's cross. He's lifted up on a pole and this pole is in a place that is called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And people look up to see him and see that he has died. But now they look up and they see that Christ is no longer on that cross. And for that reason, they know that they can live because he conquered death, hell and the grave. It says that as the snake was lifted up on the pole, even so must the son of man be lifted up. The words that come to us remind us that if you and I do our ample best to make sure that we lift up Jesus and when people see him, they will find their healing. They're healing in every way possible. They're healing physically. They're healing spiritually. They're healing mentally. They're healing socially. We must lift Jesus up. Now, in the passage, we found out that they were lifting him up so that everybody could receive what God had in store for them. Their healing. Even it is true for us today that we must lift him up. Our text finds itself that after we hear this introduction, then we begin to see so that everyone might believe and have eternal life. Now we see, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The earlier part of this pericope begins to help us to see there is a man who's a ruler of the Jews by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of those religious leaders but Nicodemus, not only was he a religious leader, but he was one who was interested in the work of Jesus. That lets us see that even those who were part of Jesus following, because Jesus was starting to cause a great following. Many people were following him. And Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Jews, uh, he begins to find himself in an awkward situation. He was fascinated. He was intrigued. He wanted to know more about this Jesus of Nazareth. But by the same token, since he was a ruler and a leader among the Jews, he had to make sure that he did not publicly have himself seen with Jesus because Jesus was a threat to Judaism as it was practiced in their day. Jesus was going against all of their ritualistic practices, their norms. And so now this Jesus is now having an encounter with Nicodemus. 
Nicodemus understands and he sees that uh, Jesus is the one that has a great following and he wants to know a little bit more about him. And he begins to have this dialogue with him and ask himself the question, well, how can I be born again? Do I enter the second time into my mother's womb? And, and Jesus tells him, I know uh, you must understand this is about the spirit and water. Well, he uses this analogy because all of us know that whenever a, a woman is, is pregnant with a child, you, you have that fluid that, that's on the inside of the womb that provides the child with everything that they need. That's the water. And we also know that that child has a spirit and that spirit has been placed within that child, in that woman, because God has ordained it to be so. We find the Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you and I had plans for your life. So it lets us see that Nicodemus understands a little bit about this water piece, but the whole spirit piece is all new to him. He was just used to doing the ritualistic practices of, of washing his hands in water, the ceremonial washings, and, and making sure that the water rolls down his forearms and rolls off of his, falls off of his elbows to make sure that he did everything just ritualistically so. But my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God is not concerned with our ritualistic practices, but he's more concerned with our hearts. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, that there are ritualistic practices that teaches us great things to know about God. We have certain ritualistic practices that you and I do in our modern Christianity. Remember, when new believers come to Christ, we baptize them. We not only do that in the Baptist church, we make sure we give them the right hand of fellowship. We have new members, new discipleship orientation, which is, a, which is very similar to going through a catechism or going through a confirmation class. It's to make sure that we really understand what we're doing. So Nicodemus finds himself intrigued by the teachings of Jesus, but Nicodemus doesn't want to be seen by all of his colleagues and broad open day. So he has a midnight conversation with Jesus. He has a late night conversation with Jesus. And, and Jesus begins to share with him what he needs to know about being born again. And it is after this conversation that he lets him know and he helps him to understand that just as the serpent was lifted up before the children of Israel in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. I wish I could get somebody to say hallelujah. I remember we used to sing the song. I wish I had somebody to help me lift Jesus. Who will help me lift Jesus? You know, when you and I lift him up, that means that we are magnifying the name of the Lord. We're saying, Jesus, I thank you for what you've done for me at Calvary. Jesus, I thank you for all the wonderful ways that you have touched not only my life, but so many others. Jesus, I thank you for what you did for the woman who was at the well, that you knew everything about her. You knew all about her life. But by the same token, you did not hold her sins against her relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I can't help but lift you up. Just like the woman who had the issue of blood, who said, if I could just touch the hem of his garments, then I know I'll be made whole. She had to tell everybody, I touched the hem of his garments, just like the man who was blind. And Jesus restored his sight. He could not keep it to himself. He had to tell everybody that's lifting him up. You know, we live in a world today that we will lift up the name of movies. We'll lift up the name of celebrities. But I wish I had somebody who will help me lift up Jesus. The Bible says if he be lifted up, he will draw all humanity unto him. That's what we have to do. Those of us who are the believers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have to lift him up for all the world to see. The question is, Pastor, how do you lift him? I'm so happy you asked it me. We lift him by living in a way that will bring him glory, a way that everybody will say there's something new on the inside of you. There's something different about you. There's something in your life that I just can't pinpoint it, but I know it's something. Then we got to tell him what a change has come over my life because I've allowed Jesus to be Lord of my life.
my brothers and my sisters, when we allow Jesus to be on the scene, when we allow Jesus to be the main character and not ourselves, that's the reason why we cannot let everybody see us and never see Jesus. But when people are looking at us, we have to do like we do whenever we're playing sports. I don't know about you, but I used to play the point guard. And whenever I gave somebody an assist, they would point to me and say, thank you for what you've done. I don't know about you, but even as a guard, sometimes we would run some plays that I would get the assist and I point and say, thank you for what you've done. So in essence, we're saying that in this season of March Madness, everybody crazy about basketball, want to lift up the ACC, want to lift up the MEAC, want to lift up the CIAA, want to lift up the Big Ten, want to lift up all of those different leagues. But we must learn to lift up Jesus because when we lift him up, everybody will be drawn unto him. I wish I could find somebody who will help me lift Jesus. When we lift him up, it's then everybody will know he is the savior of the world. He is the great I am. He is the prince of peace. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. And then we can say, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the King James rendering of it. But we know that God loved us so much that he gave his very best. And if Jesus was the very best that God had to give, let you and I give him our very best. As a child, I remember growing up and singing at the Sunshine Band, uh, the little choir that Miss Mary Streeter had at the University Park Baptist Church. We would sing that song, give of your best to the Savior, give him the strength of your youth, clad in salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Oh, if we give God the best that we have, our communities will become better. Our homes will become better. Our places of fellowship will become better because we've learned to lift up Jesus. When we lift him up, folk will understand that God loved us so much. He gave his very best and that we, when we receive his precious gift, it is then there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When we know there's no condemnation, God doesn't condemn us. That means God loves us and he extends his love and his grace and his mercy to us. The text says that those who don't receive him are condemned already. God didn't send his son to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. And you know, that's the gospel that we preach. That's the gospel that we believe. Because that's the gospel that we find in God's written word. Today, if you and I embrace this gospel, if we believe this gospel, God will prove that he is who he says he is. All you got to do is ask him and he will show you the signs, the signs that are written in holy writ. He will show you the signs in our day to day lives. He will show you the signs by having a conversation with you. Oh, I love the little song that says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about your trouble, all about your struggles. He will hear your cry and he'll answer by and by. And you will feel something on the inside that we call a prayer wheel turning. And you'll know that a little fire is burning because just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. Don't you know that when you and I talk to Jesus, when you and I talk to God using that name that's above every name, Jesus the Christ, it is then that we will find in our lives the power of God's spirit. My brothers and sisters, God wants us all to know that there's no judgment against anyone who believes in him. God loves us so that he sent his son Jesus into the world and God's light came into the world. But the unfortunate piece is that there are some people who love darkness more than light because they don't want to be exposed. They evil deeds. They don't want anybody to find out about it. But, you know, in our contemporary world, everybody can find out almost anything they want to know. There are no real secrets. There's cameras everywhere. There are cameras on our phones. There are cameras in our homes. There's all sorts of electronic devices. But guess what? God sees all. God hears all. And God knows all. And God wants all of us to be in a right relationship with him. So today, I want to encourage you. Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Lift him up by singing the song. Lift him up. 
by letting everybody know that Christ is the Lord of my life. Lift him up by letting everybody know that the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ can deliver you mentally, can deliver you spiritually, can deliver you physically, can deliver you emotionally as we deal with all of the crises that have come through and by COVID-19. All of us see all the repercussions because it's like throwing a, pe a pebble into the water. You see the ripples and it goes everywhere. Today, God wants you to know his love goes everywhere. Just make room for him and he wants to come in and he wants to be your Lord and your Savior. And if you would like to, you can do that right now by praying a very simple prayer. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Make me your child. I want to be your child, and I want you to be my father. He'll do it if you only ask him. Today, if you've done that, please let us know. You can email us here at the fountain, and we'll be happy to pray with you. You can email us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org, and we will lead you and guide you in prayer. If you'd like to join us as we go forward to do the work of ministry, and if you'd like for us to join you by praying with you and talking with you, email us at join at the fountain of Raleigh.org and we'll be here to help lead and guide you. We pray God's blessings will be with you and keep you not only today, but every day of your life. Because promise, I promise you that God will keep his promise because he has never failed us yet. The encouragement that we find is the text says, if we lift him up, he will draw all men unto him. Today, won't you lift him up? And I pray that God will bless you all day long. Please remember, after we finish this service of worship, you can join us for Bible study at 11. That is for everyone. Then you can join our young adults this afternoon at 4 o'clock as they have their time on Zoom. Go to the calendar here at the Fountain of Raleigh, and you can find out all the wonderful happenings that are going on. We want to meet you. We want to greet you. We want to minister to you, both mind, body, and spirit. Let's now receive the benediction. Now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless, preserve, and keep you. May he bless you in your leisure, in your labor, in your joys, and in your sorrows. And remind you, there's hope for today as well as tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Remember, there's a place you can go where peaceful waters always flow, and that's at the fountain. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow for our daily devotional. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.